pass on the guard. GMAC Chevrolet team did a great job getting this one ready to go. Got a good qualifying spot and uh, things felt really good in half the hour, so looking forward to the race. Could this be the day that Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 46 race winless streak comes to an end? We're about to find out together. We invite you to sit back and enjoy as 43 of NASCAR's finest head of the green flag and listen in as we go full time. on the rear tire carrier. He's got carrying the tire out there for the rear tire changer. You can see he's busy, man. He's moving around this car quick, watching the, trip, the tire changer pull the tire off, and he helps him put it. He basically puts the tire on for the tire changer. Happens really fast. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's listen to Earnhardt Jr.'s radio. Yeah, it's terrible driving like that. It's all bouncing. It won't turn. I know you love to see that valence down, but it won't handle when it's like that. This track is too bouncy and rough for that. Uh, something didn't get done on the setup plate this morning because he's traveling way more. Oh, yeah, well, he drive it. You wouldn't be too damn good a motor about it either. Well, we've got one car with show and smoke sliding sideways. We'll get back to that again, Jamie McMurray, for the second time today. But this time it's coming out of turn three, and that will bring out caution number three. This is where it all started. You see Jamie get loose in the 40 car of David Stremme. Couldn't get out of the crowd quick enough. He gets in his back. And Jamie, frustration beginning to build for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 18. They think they may have gotten a little bit too aggressive with their shock package today, and they fear there may be nothing they can do about it. Let's listen. Yeah, I mean, the worst case scenario, you can change the shock. I really don't want to do that. I mean, if we run in 16th and 8th, 20 on there, I'll change it. But for right now, we've got to do what we can do here. Yeah, I'm with you. I know. Just tell me there ain't no alternative, and I'll just shut up about it because I'm tired of talking about it, really. Bad news for Dale Jarrett, the 44 car. Looks like problems under the hood, blowing motor, some type of thing. Well, that hood just went down awful easy, Andy. When that happens, there's a problem. But you got to wonder if the pressure may be getting to Jimmy Johnson just six races to go in the race to the chase. Listen in. Hey, can you start this water? 10 4. Now, now, bud. Long race here. Long race. They want to deliver another message to that eight spotter. We're about six cents a lap quicker, and we ain't waiting. Back and pump it on. Not a good sign. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Budweiser crew up on the wall, and that's because the caution is out, and he spun the car. Let's show you what happened. Earnhardt Jr. a moment ago said he thought he had a tire going down. Here he is coming out of turn three. It's into turn three, guys. Just flat, gets loose, and spins it around. That's a great piece of drive. It doesn't hit anything. And there's what happens when you spin one sideways at 185 to 190 miles an hour. Well, that's Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42, obviously, and he has all of one race under his belt. Wait a minute. A half a race under his belt here at Pocono. Here was a conversation on lap 125 of 200 between himself and crew chief Donnie Wingo. Now, this race is long. Sir, 10 4. This is probably the longest race, isn't it? Yep, 10 4, one of the longest races. And whatever they have done to the eight car, they should have done about 100 laps ago. Earnhardt Jr. must like this new shock on the front because he made it to the inside. And now he is on the hunt. And here comes the 19 car. The lead change right here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. And this crowd of estimated over 130,000 on their feet. Leading. 
Now moments ago, the two car of Kurt Busch able to make a move and get by on the A car. Let's listen in to Kurt Busch's radio. Reeling in some red snapper. I tell you what, man, Kurt Busch, he's going to have to hit a gear to get stopped out there, that's for sure, because he is clear sailing right now. But you know, Andy, when he gets late in the race, seems like it's when a caution start happening. These guys get aggressive out there and, uh, man, things start happening. But boy, is he looking good. Well, Doc, we're going to find out. Kurt Busch off to about a six-car length advantage over your car right now, Tony. Can you catch him? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. I mean, Kurt's really fast right now. We just have to see what his car, I mean, his car's been great on the long run, every run. So, uh, you know, right now we're, we're happy with second. But, uh, you know, something, anything can happen in these races. So we'll just keep pressuring him and see if something happens. Oh, we got a big crash. Oh, big big crash. one down here. And, and oh, David Gillen, who's had such a great run. The 26 car, Jamie McMurray, for the third time. Reed Sorensen and then the 41's involved. Here's what happened a moment ago. Still outside. Carl Edwards gets into the back of Casey Mears, turns him in that tunnel turn, and that's the worst place you can get hit in the race. Come on, what, babe. Come on. It's hard to see what happened right there, whether Reed just got out of the throttle early and, and Edwards got into it, but it looks like, guys, they just classic stacked up. They all got jammed together, getting in a tunnel turn. I don't think any of this was intentional. Total domination for Kurt Busch. As he comes through the turn, it would be the 59th win for Roger Penske. And after a 51-race winless streak, Kurt Busch takes the win at Pocono Raceway. You can describe it a lot of ways, Doc. But when you end a dry streak, when you're showered with beer... It means you've won in the NASCAR NASCAR Cup Series again. Kurt, incredible, incredible display here today. I know it was a team effort. Absolutely. I just couldn't be happier to drive this car. Uh, Penske Racing, what a, what a car. And this is all due to Pat Trison, bringing him aboard these past five, six races. It's been a pleasure. And I'm going to name this car Pat Trison Special. So it'll be the PT Special. Maybe I know that from all the PT pubs back in Las Vegas where everybody enjoys Miller Lite. Awesome day for this team, for Penske. This engine was stout. That really did a lot of work for me. Penske Jasper Power down the straightaway. We had Mobile One protecting it. I mean, the guys everywhere that put this thing together. I feel like a new newborn kid again. We're ready to run for this chase. Um, big picture, we didn't gain many points on, on Dale Jr. today or any of the guys because they ran well. But other big picture is all the Americans that enjoy Miller Lite with us today. I encourage them to go out to the convenience stores, the grocery stores, or their pubs. Grab your fresh Miller Lite. Celebrate with us all week because we're here and we're going to try to get in the chase. It seems like it's game on in the battle of the beverage wars, if you will. You and Kurt Busch didn't really gain on him, but a good point day nonetheless. He did what he had to do, and so did we. Um, I enjoy the battle of the beverages, as you put it. Um, it matters when it comes to them guys up in St. Louis. They highlight those cars on the, on the paper when they get into August. So, you know, it's important to me, and it's something I, I know they pay attention to, so I pay attention to it, but we're racing the rest of them cats too. Uh, I'm telling you, we're a good race team. We're going to be fine. And it heads off to Watkins Glen for the race to the chase, but after waiting for 51 C, guess what? Kurt Busch is back in the saddle again. The Penske car goes to victory lane after a dominating performance. But Kurt Busch, we